today I'm going to revisit a topic uh, that we touched on before, um, but my experience with patients over the past year indicate that this is a, a topic that needs to be revisited multiple times, and that's the implication of getting old uh, on prostate cancer treatment, particularly uh, metastatic uh, prostate cancer. Uh, so what are the problems with treating older men with prostate cancer that don't happen in the younger people? Well, one of the major things that happens, is most drugs are cleared by the kidney or liver uh, and the ability of your body to get rid of drugs uh, decreases as you age. Uh, most men over 80 have a, a 50 percent reduction in the ability of their body to get rid of drugs. So if the drug is given at a standard dose, blood levels go much higher uh, than, than you would want and side effects are more likely to happen. Also, because the drug clearing machinery is what's decreasing, drug interactions become more of a problem. Uh, so using high doses of drugs get to be a problem and combining drugs get to be a problem. Uh, in medicine we call the use of many drugs polypharmacy uh, and polypharmacy causes a problem in older patients uh, both because the dose of each drug may be too high and drug interactions are, are also more of a problem. Another problem that happens uh, as men age is they become more frail. They're more fragile physically, uh, particularly muscle and coordination. Uh, study after study has shown that uh, in men over 80 and, and 90 that loss of muscle mass uh, and weakness uh, herald uh, adverse survival. Something as simple as grip strength is surprisingly good at predicting survival. Uh, frailty is one of the major reasons men end up in nursing homes. So a big problem. And of course hormonal therapy, uh, reducing serum testosterone levels uh, with Lupron or, or drugs like that, cause medical castration and make even men in their 50s frail. So you can imagine the impact on an elderly patient of a castrate testosterone. Uh, so if you're going to get a castrate testosterone in an older man, you have to anticipate there are going to be problems with frailty, uh, and you have to take that into consideration. If the patient has an exercise program, it helps. Little details like that uh, matter. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, Patients do vary, but the uh, variability from patient to patient in a 50-year-old male is much less than the variability from patient to patient of, of those who are 85 to 90. Why? Well, people vary in how fast they age on a genetic basis. Some people come from long-lived families. Uh, at age 80, they can look like someone else at age 60. So the genetics plays a role, how fast you're destined to age because of your genetics. By the time you're 85, lifestyle comes home to roost. So if you exercise and let a healthy life, you're much more likely to be vigorous at 85 than if you sat in front of the television set, drank beer and ate a pizza every night, uh, and are obese, uh, have diabetes, hypertension, etc. Had a couple heart attacks. So, and then accidents. Someone can have great genetics, lead a wonderful lifestyle, and have an automobile accident that uh, makes them immobile. And suddenly now they're sedentary. And they have all sorts of problems. Paraplegics, for example, have a Increased risk of urinary tract infections and bed sores and, and things like that. 
So the combination of genetics, lifestyle, and accidents mean that by the time someone gets to be 85 or 90, uh, the variability from patient to patient is enormous. Uh, and you can't treat these patients uh, with a one-size-fit-all. You really have to carefully evaluate the impact of treatment on the patient who sits in front of you. Uh, so one of the tools we have used in the elderly patients uh, is to try and avoid suppressing testosterone, but instead give casodex to block the ability of the cancer to use testosterone. And this appears to be more gentle uh, than uh, treatment with full-on hormonal therapy with castrate testosterone levels. Uh, and for years, uh, Casodex and Avidar, uh we call it hormonal therapy light, has been our go-to treatment for patients over 90. Uh, and for those in their 80s with multiple medical uh, problems, uh, and if we can get away with hormonal therapy light, uh, we do it. Uh, so I'd like to talk about one patient uh, because he's the most extreme example of, of these issues that, that I have in my clinic. Uh, and we've been able to successfully tailor uh, treatment to uh, his aging. He comes to me at age 92 uh, with a newly diagnosed Gleason 6 uh, inoperable mass in his pelvis uh, and a PSA of about 22. Uh, his family history is uh, extreme longevity. Uh, many people in the family break 90. Uh, several were in their hundreds. Uh, so great uh, underlying genetics. He led a prudent lifestyle. Uh, and exercise, uh, and so he optimized that and had had no accidental events that impair his function. So among 92-year-olds, he was one of the most vigorous. And it was a Gleason 6, so hormonal therapy light fit well. Uh, and from age 92 to 104 and a half, we were able to control his cancer with two or three Casodex pills a week uh, and daily Avidart. Uh, at 104 and a half, uh, Casodex, as it, as it often does, suddenly started stimulating his cancer, and his PSA went from 1 or 2 to 42 in a very short period of time. Well, the next drug up is Xtandi, X T A N D I. Now, Extandi is a very useful, powerful drug, but even in men in their 70s, 60s, and 70s, it can cause significant fatigue and other side effects. Uh, and the full dose is 4 40 milligram uh, pills a day. Well, we started him on a 75% dose reduction, one pill a day, and the PSA rapidly went from 42 to less than 1. Why was the low dose so effective? Well, at first I suspect this cancer was very sensitive to the drug, but at 104 and a half, uh, his ability to clear, eliminate, destroy Xtandi will be dramatically less, uh, and his blood level attained from one pill a day would be much higher than it would be in a 50-year-old patient. So the dose, re oh, I'm reducing the number of pills by 75%. The blood level of the drug in his body was almost certainly much higher than you would have anticipated from that dose in a 50-year-old. So this is just adjusting the dose for age. Well, once we got his PSA below 1, we've been able to t taper uh, Xtandi to one pill, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it's now 18 months later, and he just passed his 106th birthday. Excellent cancer control on three extandia a week. 
So it's an example of how in the elderly you need to be flexible and the older the patient the more flexible uh, and attentive to these issues you need to be. But if you are attentive you can successfully treat patients. He's had virtually no side effects from the Xtandi at this reduced dose. It's been doing very, very well. So this is an example of the points I'm just talking about. To successfully treat the elderly patient, you need to take into consideration their genetics, the impact of lifestyle over the course of their life, any accidents that might have happened in their life to make them more susceptible to side effects and adjust the dose and the drugs that you use accordingly. The other broad principle is use as few drugs as you need to to get the job done and then use those drugs in the lowest dose necessary to get the job done. Which isn't actually a bad rule to follow in cancer patients at any age. Hmm? Anyway, I hope you enjoy this uh, and if you're old, over 80 and watching this video uh, pay attention and talk to your doctor about these issues. Enjoy.